Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out the fresh new Kobo Ellipsa 2e. This premium £350 e-reader is gone straight for the Kindle Scribes jugular. You have yourself a similarly massive 10.3 inch e-ink display, you've got that stylus support for all your annotatey, highlighty goodness. But is it worth that sky high asking price and how does it stack up to Amazon's Kindle Scribe? Can't actually fit all of this on my face into frame. Well, here's my full unboxing and review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get in this almighty box? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, you've got one Kobo Ellipsa 2E. You've also got yourself a USB-C charging cable. It's only a short one, just like me, but at least it's braided, so it should prove pretty hardy. No power adapter, however, just like the Kindle Scribe and quite a lot of electronic devices these days, you will have to provide your own. You've got yourself one Kobo Stylus 2 when you want to get all scribbly or sketchy. And I've also chucked in some spare nibs as well, just in case. Great word that, nib, underutilised. And you've also got yourself a quick start guide in case you're new to Kobo. Although we're talking pretty basic stuff here. Don't forget to charge it up, kiddies. And that's it, that's your lot. So now let's actually check out this e-reader. So here in all its glory is the fresh new Kobo Ellipsa 2e. It's a 10.3 inch Goliath and doesn't exactly break any conventions when it comes to e-reader design, but it feels quite premium. It is completely constructed from plastic, which is rather obvious, though at least it's 85% recycled plastic, so saving the baby penguins, etc. Reasonably skinny, although I don't think it's quite as slender as the Kindle Scribe. And I do rather like the textured rear end as well, which adds a bit of grip and just makes it look a bit nicer. Although it looks like it's already starting to pick up grubby, greasy fingerprints from my handling of it, which is always a good sign. If you want a bit of side-by-side -side action with the Kindle Scribe, well, here you go. Pretty much identical dimensions all through, except that the Scribe is a bit skinnier. The Ellipsa 2e, ever so slightly bigger display, 10.3 inches versus 10.2 here on the Scribe. The Scribe does have a bit more heft to it, so the Corbo is certainly the winner there. Feels comfortable to clutch, thanks to the fact you've got this one big fat bezel, so plenty of grip in space. And naturally that screen does rotate as well, so it doesn't matter if you're a lefty or a righty. And I don't know if this will be particularly well picked up on camera, but the ellipsa tweed does taper ever so slightly away from that thick bezel as well. Just helps to give it a nice balanced feel. But you've also got a couple of little feet here on the back end. And that's great design because it means when you've got the ellipsa tweed lying flat on a desk or table or whatever, it doesn't rock around when you're poking it. If you plan on doing a lot of travelling with your Kobo Ellipsa 2E, you want to keep it extra safe and protected, where you can always spunk out a little bit extra cash on the sleep cover, although this does cost an extra 70 quid. Cost of living crisis? What cost of living crisis? And so here is the sleep cover. Uh, as you can see, it only protects the front, not the back. But as you'd expect, you do get a lovely soft felt inner lining, so that should help keep the screen scratch free. The cover just snaps onto the skinnier edge of the Ellipsa 2E and is held on there firmly by the magical power of magnets. It takes a good bit of force to yank it off. You've also got magnets holding it shut as well so it doesn't flop open it in your backpack or whatever. And then when you open it up, as you can see, the device wakes up and then slapping it closed again will hibernate it. You'll have to be careful to make sure that the cover is perfectly lined up though because as you can see, that's not always necessarily the case. Besides that, I quite like the design. As you can see, you've got a nicely textured pattern, kind of like crinkled paper. And I like how you've got space inside that cover to slip your stylus pen as well, so you can just hide that away out of sight. Now, if you've used one of Rakuten's Kobo e-readers before, no surprises when it comes to the general UI. Layout is same as before. It's nice and intuitive. You've got access to all of your recent reads and everything here on the home screen. You can check out your full library in my books. You've got quick search functionality, otherwise you can order by titles, authors, series, etc. And if you need a new read, you can always jump into the Discover section, which takes you online. The Kobo store is pretty healthfully stocked these days. You've got quite a lot of stuff to choose from. Lots of popular authors, pretty much every genre covered off. And a nice, simple, intuitive layout as well, so you can have a bit of a scroll through, check out the most popular titles, top picks for you, etc. And good news for fellow graphic novel geeks as well, because they've got a decent selection of comics, including manga and everything. Some big titles on there, including the likes of Spy X Family. Got your Blue Locks, your Chainsaw Mans, all the most popular stuff right now. And if you want to give your eyes a bit of a rest, you've also got an audiobook section as well. Again, pretty well stocked, lots of big names in there. Lots of new titles, classic titles. Unfortunately, as you can see, some of them aren't exactly particularly cheap. Garth Marenghi's Terratome, 22 quid! 
I really want it, but oh. And I believe potentially some of my books from back in the day might still be on the Kobo store as well. Let's have a bit of a squint. Searching, searching, ah, oh, found. So if you fancy a freebie, get stuck in. Four star rating as well, I'll take that. And then if we dive into the more section, you've got fast access to your wish list. You can also check out how much you've been reading. Got some beta features stuffed away in here, including a large print mode, even some built-in games like Sudoku and Solitaire. And I've got to say Solitaire made a lot more difficult by the fact that it is a monochrome display. And the final section in the main menu is my notebooks. This is great if you like to scribble down lots of memos. Otherwise, as you can see, you've also got an advanced notebook section, which even supports diagrams and equations. Now that 10.3 inch e-ink display isn't quite as crisp as the Amazon Kindle scribes, unfortunately. It's a 1404 by 1872 pixel resolution, giving you 227 pixels per inch. And to be fair, while that's not quite as sharp as the Kindle scribes, when you crunch that font size all the way down, that text does actually still remain legible as long as your eyes are up to the task. I'm not really sure why you'd want it quite this small unless you really, really have a phobia of turning pages. And if you are kicking back with a comic book, a graphic novel, something with lots of lovely pictures and illustrations, well, the screen is certainly sharp enough to do it full justice. Although I have noticed some light ghosting on that display. It's most obvious when you've got a thick black section. It's got some remnants of the previous page there. But overall, honestly, really not bad at all. I've seen a lot worse on e-readers, that's for sure. Like basically all e-readers, you've got an anti-glare display here. So that's great news if you want to get stuck into a couple of juicy paperbacks around the pool on your holidays. And even if you do have a lot of glare going on, well, no worries, you can boost that brightness. There's no auto brightness option, however, so you will have to manually tweak it up and down to suit your environment. But as you can see there, ably countering the harsh studio lighting. And you can also change up the color temperature as well. So as you can see there, you can make things nice and warm. Really, really good for that late night viewing. Just makes things nice and easy on the eye. And as you can see there, you can set your bedtime. So you can have that screen automatically get super warm when you're all tucked up with Teddy. And there is an auto feature for the color temperature as well. So you can have that automatically get super orangey when you move into a more ambient environment. And as you can see there, all the usual features when you are reading a book, you've got fast access to all of your various stats. You can also jump into the settings, completely format the information, the layout, everything your heart desires. There's also a built-in dictionary, but nothing to the extent of the x-ray feature you get on those Kindles. And when you're reading, you can use your Kobo Stylus 2 pen to do any little annotations, sketches. You can do some highlighting as well, if you like. Or simply doodle in the margins if you are a bored 15-year-old. Just as satisfying as always. The Stylus pen is very responsive indeed. Feels just as good to use as the Kindle Scribe pen. And I love that sort of lovely feedback you get when you are scribbling on the screen. It really does feel like sketching on paper. Please don't do all this to my book if you get it, by the way. Thankfully, the back end of the Kobo Stylus 2 acts as an eraser, so you can quickly get rid of any scribblings that you did not mean to do. Erase the lot from existence like it never happened. And also, if you tap this little icon down here, you've got fast access to all of your annotations you've made in a book, so you can quickly jump to any piece that caught your eye. What I will say, though, is I wish there was a Find My Stylus feature, because I literally just dropped it, it bounced off my foot, scuttered somewhere into a random corner of the studio. I've got no idea where it's gone. As for file compatibility, well, it's a pretty decent range, kind of similar to the Kindle Scribe. You've got the likes of PDF, CPUB, Mobi, CBZ and CBR for your comic books and graphic novels. Although the only audiobooks supported are those directly downloaded from the Kobo store. You can copy books and documents directly onto the Kobo Ellipsa 2E using the bundled USB cable from your laptop, PC, whatever. Otherwise, you've also got full Dropbox support and apparently Google Drive support is incoming. Let's just check out one of these audiobooks while we're in here. As you can see, nice, simple, straightforward interface. Again, a little bit sparse and barren perhaps, but you know, you've got your bit of album art as it were right there. Let's just quickly try pairing it up with my Marshall Middleton speaker. He's scanning, there we go, a bit of Middleton action. Connection field, well, that's a good start. Connecting to audio. Could not connect to audio. Excellent. <laughs> okay, there we go. Fourth or fifth time is a charm. So we are now connected to the Bluetooth speaker, ready for action. You can change the volume here on the ellipsa if you need to. I'm Graham McTavish. Well, in the beginning, there was a man in a kilt. Boost that right back down again. At least it's nice and responsive, and you can skip forward or back if you want to. And you can also change up how quickly the book is read as well if you have a pretty busy lifestyle. Start with the book. Two good friends, Mander and Vicar, their way across the Scottish Islands. Christine life and Liam in that casual way, the next man attractive. And it's also worth pointing out that if you do happen to smash your way through tons of books and audiobooks every month, 
probably worth investing in a Corbo Plus Premium subscription. This will cost you £9 a month if you just want books or just want audiobooks, otherwise £12 a month if you want the pair. You've got a decent sized catalogue to select from, 1.3 million regular ebooks and 100,000 audiobooks. I just wish it was a wee bit easier to actually dive into that Plus subscription catalogue through the e-reader itself. 32 gigs of space here on the Ellipsa 2e as well, so plenty of space for loads of audiobooks as well as ebooks. Certainly plenty to keep you going, even if your holiday is a proper backpacking around the world effort. And sadly, the battery size isn't quite as gargantuan here on the Ellipsa 2e as it is on the Kindle Scribe. You've got a 2,400 mAh capacity cell compared with 3,000 on the Scribe. However, that's still more than good enough for hours and hours of reading, audiobook playback, and of course a good bit of sketching if you haven't lost your stylus. And that right there is my unboxing and full-on tour of Corbo's fresh new Ellipsa 2e e-reader. Certainly is a Kindle Scribe rival, very similar functionality to that e-reader. The stylus feels great to use, you can quickly and easily annotate and highlight any books and documents. Although with the Scribe you've got that bigger battery, you've got the slightly sharper screen and you've got overall a better catalogue to work with. Of course if you are looking for a device with an e-ink display to get all sketchy and doodly and everything you might be better off with something like the Onyx Boost devices. Full on Android e-tablets you can actually download apps from the Google Play Store to get all creative. So that's what I reckon anyway. What do you guys think of the Kobo Ellipsa 2e? Are you tempted? Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!